Hi, I'm Paul Edwards with Norton Clipper, and today we're going to replace the clutch on a high-speed saw. First step that we need to do to remove the clutch is to constrain the piston from moving. To do that, we're going to remove the top cover, then the spark plug. We take our T25 Torx driver, Now remove the spark plug boot by pulling up on the boot and not the wire. Take your spark, spark plug wrench and remove the spark plug. There are several ways to constrain the piston. They range from very high-tech methods such as elaborate piston stops to using a really high-tech method of shoving a rope down into the spark plug hole. Now we need to relieve the tension on the belt. To do that, we're going to have to loosen these two 13 millimeter flange nuts and then turn this screw counterclockwise. Now once the tension's removed from the belt, we can take the 13 millimeter flange nuts off, remove the belt guard. Then I'd like to take one of the flange nuts and place it on the stud that holds the blade guard in place and just snug it so that the blade guard will not fall off the machine. Now we need to remove the three T25 Torx screws that hold the clutch cover in place then lift the cover off and away. The clutch shoes have a snap ring that's in place. You have to remove the snap ring first. We'll use a small straight blade screwdriver to pry the snap ring off the end of the crankshaft. Now the clutch assembly uses a left hand thread in order to take it off, we will need to turn it clockwise as you're looking at it. There are two methods to remove it. One is to use a universal clutch tool that works on chainsaws and high-speed saws, or to use a punch and a hammer. If you use a punch and a hammer, hit on the spoke that's at the three o'clock position and thread the old shoe off the machine. Pull the spacer out. Pull the clutch drum and belt. Be sure to clean off the crankshaft of any rust, dirt, or debris. The new clutch assembly may be a little different than the one that you just removed. The new clutch kits consist of a drum, a ring spacer, a large shield, a secondary shield, clutch shoes, and a small snap ring. To install, first slide the clutch drum onto our clean crankshaft. Make sure it's pushed all the way to the shoulder. Next, place our ring spacer over the crankshaft and against the drum. Then we take our clutch shoe. You'll note that one side has some numbers and the word top. That will face outward towards you when assembling. And flip it over to the opposite side of where it says top. We place our secondary shield in between the notches in the shoes. Then our large shield, the boss, points towards the secondary shield. Slide these onto the crankshaft, then turn it counterclockwise to tighten. To tighten, we'll turn it counterclockwise. We can either use the clutch 
tool and a large wrench to torque it. If you do not have a universal clutch tool, you can always use a punch and hammer by tapping on the leg of the shoe that's closest to the nine o'clock position. Now we install the small snap ring to the end of the shaft by using our snap ring pliers. At this point, we'll reinstall our belt. Slide it around the clutch drum first. And slide it over the blade shaft pulley. One point to keep in mind is to make sure that the belt is inside of the cavity where my finger is. Before we can install our clutch cover, we need to take the 13 millimeter flange nut off that was holding our blade guard in place. I'll place the clutch cover. over the clutch housing. Tighten the three screws with our T25 torch driver. The pointer is to make sure the end of the belt tensioning screw is flush with the face of the square nut. The reason for this is to ensure that we get the cutting arm pushed back towards the muffler as far as possible to ensure that the belt tensioning screw is aligned properly. The reason for that is that I can ensure that I have the cutting arm pushed fully back towards the engine as much as possible before tensioning the belt. Like the belt guard in place. Take our 13 millimeter flange nuts. Just hand tighten or snug. Now we're going to tighten this T25 belt tensioning screw. We'll turn it clockwise to tighten it. I recommend to take a hand tool T25 driver and keep tightening the tensioning screw until you feel resistance in your hand. When you feel resistance and it starts to get hard to turn, stop. It's critical to make sure that these flange nuts are fully tightened. If not, the belt can lose tension. Now we remove our piston stop place our spark plug, tighten the spark plug, replace the spark plug boot, place the top cover, and tighten the four T25 head screws. And that's how you replace the clutch on a high speed saw. I hope you enjoyed this video and be sure to check out more for Norton Clipper.